Hello, my name is Brett Maher. Uh, I'm the co-founder of the company Process Safety Verification, and today we're here to talk about balanced bellows in cryogenic application. Now, cryogenic application presents um, one problem, or a large problem for pressure relief, and that big problem is ice. So any leakage past the valve, if it comes into contact with moisture, will cause ice. So this happens, may happen at the, um, on the on the valve side or it may happen further down in the exhaust system. Now onshore this icing risk is often mitigated by connecting to a, a dry flare header. So we're connecting to a flare header that um, doesn't have any moisture in it, therefore reducing the likelihood of ice buildup in the exhaust system or in the relief valve. Um, this does create um, a few problems. So by connecting to a flare header we may have back pressure. So depending on types of valves, number of valves, we may have different continuous or variable back pressures. And if that back pressure is higher than um, what a conventional valve can um, operate in, so we'd be starting to look for what's the next type of valve that we'd use, and the obvious choice would be balanced bellows valves. And that's really what we want to talk about today. So when you're looking at your balanced bellows valve, um, so here, here's a drawing of a balanced bellows valve. We've put in the bellows, and you can see there's two separate areas in this valve. So you've got the exhaust system, which will, is the downstream side of the valve, which goes out here. And in the pink shaded area, we've got the, the bellows side of the valve. Now, the, the first problem that we have in this situation, in a cryogenic application, is that, well, first of all, it's cold. So we're going to have cold transferring through the valve and coming into contact with this vented side of the bellows. So um, the vented side is vented to atmosphere and therefore may contain moisture. So over time this cold may, um, may cause ice to build up within the bellows. So then when the, when the valve tries to operate, um, it can't operate. Uh, and now that is going to be very, very hard to detect and may cause a very high hazardous situation. The second um, problem, and this may come down by trying to tackle the first problem. So, you know, you m the one option may be let's provide heating and insulation for the valve, particularly the the bellow, the um, upstream part, so that uh, ice can't form. But the problem is that we still got cold transferring through the mechanism and to the bellows. So the bellows are going to come in contact with cold um, either through um, conduction, through the material, or when the relief valve opens. So relief valve opens and you're relieving very cold material and the bellows may lose its resilience. So, And this could set you up for the opportunity for cracking. Now in the event that you get cracking, you now have got a valve that's um, connected to atmosphere with moisture in it that can pass into the actual downstream section, so the dry um, into into the exhaust, and you may end up with um, with ice in, in this area. So, in conclusion, using balanced bellows valves in cryogenic application may cause a more highly hazardous situation than you're expecting. In the event of high back pressures, a modulating, uh, so a non-flowing pilot valve, may prove the most acceptable option. Thank you very much for your time. If you're interested in more information on PSV's training courses, so we're running a process critical safety systems training course. So it's a uh, course based around pressure relief, two-day training course um, in Melbourne, Australia on the 28th and 29th of October. Or if you'd like a copy of the slides and more information, please feel free to email me. Thank you very much for your time.